Mining in Idaho dates back to the mid-1800s. Uh, it started in Idaho in the search for gold during the Civil War. In, in the Coeur d'Alene district, they found gold and silver. The gold is what brought the prospectors to this area, and they came over the pass, over the divide between the North Fork and the South Fork of the Coeur d'Alene River, and that's where the, the silver was, was discovered as a piece of galena on the mountainside when uh, Noah Kellogg's jackass broke free one night, and when Noah went looking for him, found him uh, near a, a, an exposure of galena. Since that time, there have been 1,231,000,000 ounces of silver produced in the Coeur d'Alene Mining District. The significance of that in excess of 1.2 billion ounces of silver is that it makes the Coeur d'Alene Mining District the number one mining, silver mining producer in the, in the history of the U.S. What you would see in, in the current operations is, first of all, a deep shaft. And in, in, in mining terminology, a shaft is a vertical opening. And the, the two operating mines in the district, uh, one of them has a shaft that goes down to 6,200 feet. And they've got a, a new shaft under construction. That's the Lucky Friday uh, mine I'm talking about. And the, the new shaft is going to reach a depth of 8,800 feet. And in the pursuit of gold and silver, the, uh, a byproduct of lead, zinc, and copper has added significant production to the, the, the history of the district. Silver is used for practically everything you touch. The, the, the camera you've got there, the car you drive, the computer, the iPad, the iPod. Uh, silver is a terrific conductor of electricity. Uh, lead, the, uh, the obvious one is uh, car batteries, which is far and away the number one use of lead. And zinc is used a, a great deal in the automotive industry as a, an alloy metal for steel. Regulations in our industry are quite extensive, all the way from safety. Uh, we are subject to uh, the, mine, the, the Mine Act, which established the Mine Safety and Health Administration in 1977. Uh, we refer to that agency as MSHA, and uh, any underground producing mine has to abide by the, the safety rules promulgated by MSHA. Tailings ponds are, are, are where, since the mid-1960s, mining operations have sent their tails. That is the product that's left after the metals have been extracted in the milling process. Before the mid-1960s, that material was quite often discharged into the streams. And beginning probably 40 years ago, uh, EPA took an active role in the, 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 the cleanup of those materials all the way from the mine site to Lake Coeur d'Alene, where the south fork of the Coeur d'Alene River ends up. Those environmental legacies have, have, have uh, been settled upon the, the mining companies that remain uh, to, to right all of the wrongs of that 100-year period. We don't have a large footprint. Our workings are all underground in most cases, more than a mile underground. And so our footprint consists of the, the areas uh, where we receive material on the surface and, and where our employees change clothes and get ready for work and shower after work, and then the tailings ponds that we've spoken of where the mill tailings go. You know, I, I think this industry is very important because the U.S. is a huge consumer of things like silver, lead, zinc, and copper. And if those items are not being produced at home, then they're being imported. If they're not being produced at home, where we, where we uh, abide by strict environmental regulations, then they are being produced in other countries where more than likely the environmental regulations are not nearly as stringent and the damage would be far greater. In the Coeur d'Alene district, we've been mining continuously for 129 years, with at least 25 more years already in proven and probable reserves. There's 
no reason to expect that the district is going to see a, a, a stop in that production in the foreseeable future.